Hello everyone, it's Sean from Having Fun Repairs. And in this video, we are gonna do a little bit of household troubleshooting, okay? Um, for those of you who have ever bought a, a house, I mean, not, not a brand new one, but, uh, but one that has had other residents live in it, you know that every house that's got a bit of age is gonna have some, some issues that, that need to be worked through. And uh, a lot of times in the, in the buying process, some things you can uh, you know, punt over to the seller to get resolved before, um, <clears throat> say if a housing inspection catches something, get resolved before uh, closing. Uh, and you know, you got a little bit of wiggle room working through your realtors back and forth and et cetera. Now, the issue that I ran into wasn't actually caught by the uh, home inspector. Uh, the first time we tried to use this uh, tub slash shower in, um, you know, what would be the uh, kids' bathroom uh, near their two bedrooms. Uh, this isn't in any, in any master suite or anything. I quickly learned that... Uh, Actually, the, the knob and handles back here, and this will kind of go into there. You see all that scale? Uh, I've been spraying it with some uh, CLR or lime spray or whatever. What, what, what have I been spraying with? Not sponsored, by the way. Yeah, lime away to get rid of the calcium, the, the scale build up in there. But uh, the first time I went to go give my kids a bath and I would rotate this singular knob, what uh, diverts our uh, water hot and cold and mixes it uh, for it to pour out the faucet. Uh, I noticed that uh, a little bit of turn, I don't get much water at all. And then just a little bit more turn, I'm, all I'm getting is really... Yeah, a trickle of cold water and then a lot of hot water, okay? And so in American homes, uh, if you got a single uh, a valve like this, um, what is this thing actually called? Uh, I got the part somewhere. Hold on a second. Here you go. This is a, a Fister model. That's, uh, I think it's Feister, Fister, whatever. You can ceramic cartridge, okay? It's, uh, it's basically just a valve, a two-way valve. And... Uh, as you turn it, it allows a certain amount of hot and or cold water through, okay? Cold water when it first starts, and as you turn it more and more, hot water should start to be able to seep through, and then it mixes it until you cut off the cold water, and then you just simply have hot water. And that's all managed through this right here. As a matter of fact, this one luckily had a tag on it, which I was able to look it up, so price... Uh, Feister, Price, Fister, whatever you see that model number there, 28000 uh, 0100. And looking it up online, this should be a suitable part to replace it with. <clears throat> now, the reason why these things fell um, is because of calcium buildup. Uh, you know, that, that word I said uh, before, in which we're trying to, that scale. And uh, what it does is it essentially uh, causes portions or parts of the valve to not operate the way it should. And, uh, and then you, you either have a blockage or you have a, uh, uh, you know, a part in there that's no longer turning and allowing water through. Now, the only uh, hard thing that you have to determine before you get to this point is uh, hopefully determine that you don't have a blockage in your uh, water lines. Now, this is the middle of summer here in Mississippi. And uh, I was up in the attic and nearly felt like I was going to pass out and die because it's relatively 4 o'clock, 4 or 5 in the afternoon. And that's typically when it's the most hottest and most humid right before it starts to cool back off. Uh, of course, it being over uh, way over 90 degrees Fahrenheit, yeah, being up in the attic for any length of time, it can get unbearable, especially with all the insulation, fiberglass insulation, all that stuff, breathing all that in. Highly recommend you wear a mask or something. I didn't. I was uh, pretty uh, stupid. I wouldn't say ignorant. I knew better. Uh, and I was up there for about 30 minutes. Felt like I was about to pass out. But, uh, you know, check and inspect your, your water lines. Now, if I was to turn on a flashlight and look in here, um, you know, uh, I would be looking at those water lines and checking to make sure that there's no leak or no blockage. And I don't believe that there is for this, uh, you know, I believe the failure is all right here. All right, so in order to replace it, you actually have to shut off your water. Now, I've already shut off the water. I'm not going to go back outside and show you where I've done it. I can do that at the end of this video uh, when I turn the hot water uh, valve back on and the cold water valve back on. Now, depending on your house um, and how your piping's ran, you might have 
an actual valve for your hot and cold water right inside of here somewhere that makes it really easy to shut off. Or maybe you have a false wall on the other side of your tub. This one does not. does not. I was up in the attic for the first time to, to look over all this and all the tubing uh, is run from either outside the cold water or uh, you know in the garage from the hot water tank over and then pipe throughout the uh, the roof or the rafters um, you know all the support beams uh, up in the attic so uh, I've got the water turned off so now uh, what I did is I went ahead and removed all the parts that I can remove in order to get the knob off and get all this exposed and it's going to be a pretty simple ish uh, uh, thing to do from this point. I'll just use a standard Phillips screwdriver. I think this is what a, a number two or something uh, a little bit bigger It might be a three. I don't know. It's probably somewhere on here. But anyways, uh, SN1 this is a uh, Electronic screwdriver made by client tools, but it's gonna serve its purpose So I gotta take uh, this metal plate off and we should be able to remove it uh, that metal plate and then get this part right here in and then proceed back onward. So I'll go ahead and do this because I, I'm not gonna bounce my cell phone on my hand while I'm recording this. And uh, we'll take a look at the old part and see if we can determine where the failure's at. All right, quick note. Uh, notice the uh, this area right here. Uh, this is where you would fit a gasket, as a matter of fact. The new part uh, comes with new gaskets. If you take it out, uh, make sure you peer inside. Uh, you can see the gaskets are stuck in there. I got a little bit of water dripping, so I need to make this uh, as quick as possible because I don't want a lot of water going behind the wall. But I need to remove those old gaskets so I can fit the new one in. And then uh, you should have a gasket, an overing around here. Uh, you, you're better to use uh, some form of, uh, you know, like a nice synthetic grease or something just to make it a little bit easier to put back in your replacement part. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and get the replacement part in and uh, we'll take then take another look at this guy right here. So here we go. The uh, new one's in and I'll get all this cleaned up and the old one's out and I kind of just slap the knob on it. You can see the back here. Okay, so this is where I believe the water is going to come out and then come out to your faucet. I don't believe the blockage or anything has to do with those because you can see as you, you turn the knob, you see how the, the cold there, one side opens up more first and then the other side opens up more. Okay, so that should tell you which side is hot and cold. And as you continue to turn it, get all the way turned. You can see, actually that's fully open. Yeah, there we go. And turn more and more and more. There we go. You can see one side begins to shut off. And uh, so we'll end up with more hot water and less cold water per se. But uh, I believe the failure point is actually in here. Uh, you can see there's a lot of scale build up, okay? Um, now, it might not be on the outside portion of this. Uh, it's very possible that it's on the internal portion. I could probably take this apart and uh, maybe determine it from there. But, uh, you know, that's just to kind of show you the, the action that you have on this. Now, one thing I want you to, to also take note of, um, when you turn the valve hill here, uh, you actually have a setting, okay, where you can increase or, or balance out your valve a little bit by, uh, oh, if I can get this guy off. Anyways, there we go. Uh, you see on here it says, uh, essentially, oh, if I had a light on. Let's see, can I get a light on? There we go. Uh, there it goes. says lower temp and it's got an arrow pointing this way all right so there is actually a point where this doesn't turn anymore uh, and it's currently in that point so that's where I'm having it there uh, so that's the lowest temp point setting uh, you could actually balance this out and have it slightly adjusted through here for how much hot or cold you want to allow through um, but I'm just leaving it there for for right now when I go to test this I'll be, uh, I might have to make some minor adjustments from there. So I will test it with the uh, knob off before I hook everything up. And um, yeah, with the knob off before I hook everything up. And uh, if I need to make some adjustments here, I'll go from that point. But now that all that is in, uh, now is a good time for me to uh, essentially turn the valves back on and I'll quickly show you where that's at. So for my hot water, the hot water valve is over at the hot water tank. Uh, you can see that's running perpendicular to our line here. 
uh, in order to get the hot water turned back on you gotta put it in line or in parallel with your tubing there so the hot water should now be back on let me go turn on the cold water now, like i said your house may vary uh, as far as cold water goes uh, you might have a shutoff valve inside or right at the top. I do not. I have to go outside to where our meter reading is taken for how much cold water we're using. You'll see that there's a valve right before the meter. That's the one I used. Uh, that's typically the one a maintenance technician uses. Uh, traditionally, you would turn off this valve right here, but that one's so rusted I couldn't do it. Uh, and there's not a lot of room to play in there. So I'm going to this valve right here, and i got to turn it. You can hear the water turn back on through the house. Yeah, that's fully open. And just replace the caps back to these boxes. But um, yeah, now I can run back inside and test our water line. So now that all that's back on, uh, this faucet knob has an ornate handle that I've unscrewed but uh, <clears throat> I'm just going to test this out to see if we get some cold water and already that's a huge difference yeah that's cold water right there lovely And hot water. Massive, massive difference. Alright, now my kids aren't going to scald themselves. So I was using this bathtub down here. And I'll just uh, clean everything up. And um, uh, make sure I don't have any leaks going on anywhere. Clean everything up and uh, call it a day. So that's basically it for this relatively simple uh, repair, home repair. Think, consider this yourself uh, if you're running into uh, household issues and stuff. This takes really little to no skill, not even worth uh, when, you know, when we were buying a house. Like I said, the house inspector didn't see it. We called it after we moved in. But if the house inspector did say something, you know, that's really not something to argue over because it doesn't take much to be able to replace these components uh, very low skill and the only hard part is finding your shutoff valves anyways thank you for watching this video and hanging out with me uh, here at having fun repairs uh, everybody take care and goodbye Mark.